Up and at him, everybody. Hank and Big Ben with you on this Wednesday morning. And the talk of the Commonwealth is the hashtag Transit for All Tour. And here to tell us about it is Democratic candidate for governor Ben Downing. He's actually riding the train right now. Ben, good morning. <laughs> Great to be with you, Hank and Ben. Thanks for having me. And uh, yes, on the on the rails, headed to Worcester as we speak. Well, tell us a little bit about this Transit for All Tour and what brought it about. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, the one of the key focuses of this campaign is how we build a, a stronger economy for everyone everywhere in Massachusetts. And I know, having grown up in Pittsfield and a gateway city, a lot like Worcester, that too often economic opportunity just ends up in and around greater Boston. One of the reasons for that is we haven't invested in our transportation infrastructure generally and in transit specifically. And that is the way that we connect our communities together, whether it's with trains or with buses, then we're in and around uh, our communities and our regions. We've got to empower regions and build out those networks so that we can connect people to jobs, connect them to educational opportunities, to the services they need, and costs shouldn't stand in the way. Uh, we funded our transportation agencies with an outmoded business model, and that stood in the way of them becoming everything they can and should be. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, one of the conversations since you were kind enough to, to mention Worcester that, that we talk about here is that, you know, when it comes to our transportation, uh, you know, taking that the train into work is, is so essential. And one of the things you're absolutely right that has helped Worcester's growth is the fact that we have better commuter times and we actually allow people to do a reverse commute now as, as well. So that has been yeah. essential. But, you know, when it, when it comes to the to the buses, so like you're, you're riding in now and, you know, and obviously there's a lot of business people going to work and people leaving Worcester, particularly around five in the morning to, to go into Boston to go to work. But when it comes to riding like the uh, the WRTA here in Worcester, for example, it, it isn't business people. You know, I mean, we're not a we're not a Boston or a New York where business people are kind of jumping on and uh, mm -hmm. you don't need a car to, to, to get around. It's more, uh, or it seems to be more of a of a safety net service. And I'm just wondering, as you're looking at transit for all and the equity issues around transit, what you sort of see around the uh, around the state and ways to to address, uh, as you just talked about, getting people to to be able to uh, have the transportation they need. Yeah, it's a great point, Hank, and I, I think it, it's where a couple of our policy failings come together. Because we haven't, as a state, supported uh, the RTAs at the level that we need to, uh, we, will, um, we will make sure uh, to fund them at a level that allows that service to be relevant in communities. So you know, when we don't provide funding to the WRTA, to the BRTA, at a level that's necessary, uh, they end up not providing a level of service that people can rely on, and they become just a safety net service. Now, that safety net is critically important, and we've got to support that, but we also need to have more regular ride times, more higher quality service. If we have those things together, I think more people are going to use it because they know they can build their daily schedule, their daily commute, their, their meetings around that service. But to date, the, the support has been so sparse that it's only a, a last resort, a last recourse uh, that folks are using uh, public transit and in particular buses around. Yeah. Uh, what has your, your tour this last couple of days, the transit for all, is it reinforcing what you already thought or are there some things that you're learning along the way? Uh, I'm certainly learning along the way, but I think across the board when I talk to folks, you know, all they're looking for from a transit system is the ability to, to get where they need to go, the ability to connect to their job regularly, to get their kid to childcare or to school, to be able to get to a doctor's appointment. And, you know, it's interrelated with uh, our traffic problems. So in and around greater Boston, if we have bad congestion, then our buses aren't able to connect people to where we want to. If we don't make the investments in uh, commuter rail, in the MBTA, in projects like East West Rail, uh, then we're not going to be able to tap into the potential and the opportunity that's present in gateway cities like Worcester, Fitchburg, Leominster, Holyoke, Pittsfield, and others. You know, I wanted, while we had you here, here in, in Worcester, uh, we got hit with the, the remnants of Fred. We had some yeah. terrible flash flooding, uh, you know, and then it just seemed to be, of course, you know, kind of piling on after that. Uh, you are, are somebody for, who for a number of years now has been talking about 
listen, the time to act is now when it comes to climate change. What mm-hmm. are you seeing? Are we are we too far uh, along? Uh, if you become governor, what would be some things that, 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 that you might take action on? So we absolutely aren't too far along. We're going to see impacts of climate change no matter what. The question is, are we going to act with the urgency that's required to avoid even worse changes coming? And the way we do that is join the dozen other states that have made a commitment to move to 100% clean electricity and clean energy. And that's tied in directly to transit for all. We need to give people options to get out of their cars while we also move to electric vehicles as quickly as possible. We're also going to have to take steps to shore up our existing infrastructure. I know you all saw significant flooding on Route 122 and others in the surrounding area, flash flooding that you know, really posed a real serious threat to, to life and property. And this is one of the reasons why climate was the first of the four policy plans that we've rolled out thus far, the first in the campaign, and one of the ones that we're going to spend the most time focusing on. The least renewable resource we have is time. And anyone who tells you it costs too much to act on climate change is ignoring the cost of inaction. Let me. How's the, uh, the campaign going right now? And I and, and what I mean is, you've been out there. You've been running for uh, for a while. Uh, it, it's tough, obviously, with, with with COVID, and we seem to be going through a, a little bit of a resurgence for that. You're, you're laying out these policies, but it seems as if a lot of the focus on the media right now is on you know Charlie Baker. Will he? Won't he run for uh, for a third term? Now I know you're not focused on that, but does that have an impact on your race and your ability to to get your message out? Sure. I mean, it, it, it campaigning in this like trying to run a business, like trying to run a school, like trying to, you know, uh, you know, do just about anything is more complex and tricky. But I'm excited about the feedback and the response that we've gotten to date, knowing full well that I can only control what we control, right? We're going to run out there, put forward a clear agenda, make the case for what an independent progressive governor would look like in this state, and talk about the opportunities present in our gateway city. So, yeah, we know folks aren't completely focused on this and won't be for some time. But when they do, we want them to say, yeah, not who's that guy, but yeah, Ben came here three, four, five times. I think this is my sixth trip to Worcester over the course of this campaign, and I expect to be making dozens more. So by the time people start to focus on this race, I want them to know my name and know that I've listened to them and that we have real solutions to solve the problems that they see in their community. All right, a couple more quick questions because I want you to be able to talk to the people. I mean, that's part of the reason to, to ride the, the train into Worcester, of course, is to be able to meet and, and, and talk with, uh, with, with folks. Here in Worcester, the WRTA has been free, fair free, for, oh gosh, I guess it's about the last year, really during uh, COVID. But that, that is going to, to come to an end mostly because uh, they feel, you know, like how are they going to make up like this 2 to $3 million that would be the shortfall? Uh, even though the, the WRTA is heavily subsidized, uh, there's a large group of people who are really pushing for it to remain fair free now forever. Your thoughts on, on fair free? Yeah, so I, I think one, fair free is one of the, the key pillars of this policy proposal um, and in the transit for all plan. And the way that we get there is the state making that investment. The WTRA shouldn't be in a position where they're saying, how do we actually fund uh, our operations? The state should be stepping in saying, we're going to make sure that you can do the right thing uh, to continue the the fare free uh, policy that you've had in place, because we know it directly benefits people and communities who have been hardest hit by the COVID downturn, people who are most reliant on that service. And we've seen an uptick in ridership. Uh, We've seen direct benefits to communities that need it. So um, you know, that as governor, that'll be one of my key priority proposals in the transit for all plan. All right. Uh, the last thing is, uh, and, and then we'll let, we'll let you get back to, to talking to the, the good folks on the, on the train. Uh, you're coming to Worcester. So what, what happens when you, uh, when you arrive, what's, what's your message? What are you, what are you talking to, to folks, uh, about today? Is, is it the focus on the transit? Yeah, absolutely. It will be a focus on transit, but also continuing to listen to folks, hear what they think the next governor of the state should be focused on. To share a little bit about some of my ideas around how we address some of those challenges and also talk about the opportunities that I know are present in our gateway cities. I think too often when uh, you know, we've had discussions about the needs of gateway cities like Pittsfield and Worcester, it's only focused on the challenges. But I think what, what we all know is there are significant opportunities in our gateway cities. You know, to, to be economic drivers of their regions, 
and to take some of the pressure off of the greater Boston economy as well. Uh, so I'm you know, going to be sharing some of my ideas on that front and continuing to learn from folks. Very good. Uh, people want to come out and see you today. Is there a way for them to do that? And how do they get involved in the campaign? Uh, yeah, so the best way to get involved in the campaign is at bendformats.com. And then they can uh, shoot us uh, a message on, on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram. I'll be riding the buses at the WTRA this morning and then always looking to meet with folks, whether it's uh, grabbing a cup of coffee or going to a community event that they think I can learn a little bit from. Very good. Ben Downing, Ben for governor. And Ben, thank you so much. Best of luck and appreciate you coming out to Worcester today. Thanks so much, Hank. Bye now.